I'm going to start off nicely. There's a beautiful castle up there. It would open in 2019 in the Southern Trust. And it's like our service. We started a new OPAT service within our trust. But the owner within this castle invested a lot in staff. And the reason for that, he wanted high quality. So he got the best chefs, the best housekeepers. And this was to ensure everybody that went to this castle got five-star treatment. And indeed, from the start to the finish, you met a coordinator and they coordinated all from you entered that castle to you left. They also coordinated the staff and if any issues, they would all come to that one person. So when everybody left the castle, they said, that was great quality, but also great value for money. Indeed, that's just what our new OPAT service is all about. So what is OPAT? So OPAT is outpatient parental antimicrobial therapy. And in other words, if you're in hospital or if you attend a and &E, anybody over 18 and they only need IV antibiotic therapy, we can deliver this within the community. Our an outpatient centre where our district nursing team, a very valuable member of our team, will administer the antibiotic therapy to you. So as you can see in the picture here, I met this young gentleman within the hospital, had just finished college and needed surgery, and um, very distressed in the side ward, had been in hospital quite a long time, and he needed a long-term antibiotic treatment. And obviously his preference was to be at home, if at all possible, like we all would like. This gentleman also had a just got a new job and was under an awful lot of stress because he thought, will the employer keep me or what can I do? So when we were able to offer him the OPAT service, it gave him his independence. It also gave him that he was able to earn um, a wage and the district nurse within the team where the patient was able to come to their clinic and administer these antibiotics in between his work. He was able to go in the morning and then later on in the evening. It's also very cost effective for our trust. It also relieves the pressures within the beds and uh, decreasing obviously the risk of infection. Also for the family, do you know visiting the hospital nowadays is very difficult, even the parking as you all know. And um, high quality care for this gentleman. So the context of our new team, we cover the whole of the Southern Trust area. It's very vast. It's from Kilkeel to Har, um, Cross Midland, an awful wide, wide area. 20% of the population of Northern Ireland. Um, we had a home IV service, but it was basic. It's like your basic phone, and then you get a new fancy phone. It's adding uh, quality to that. We got transformation funding from the Department of Health and that filtered through to our new OPAT um, service. And our reform was concentration on quality. We wanted better quality for our patients and our trust. Um, we got new staff members to it. We got new consultant microbiologists. Um, we got a specialist microbiology doctor and we got antimicrobial uh, pharmacists. And Susan and I were already in post, but um, you may think of your pharmacists and that, they're actually in the same office as us, so we work hand in hand as a multidisciplinary team, which is very effective. The Southern Trust OPAT pathway. So all referrals come to the epicenter through Susan and I, um, and any issues will all come through us as well. Um, we get our referrals from many disciplines, our consultants within the ward. We get them from the microbiologist who maybe gather up um, lab results that patients would need long-term antibiotics. Podiatrists are finding people um, that need antibiotics or if you're in the Belfast Trust and you live within our trust, we'll get referrals from you as well. And we also refer out to other trusts like the Southeastern or the Northern Trust. We, we will then find, we will, um, when we get them referrals, we we'll see, well, are they suitable for our, our service or not? And if they're not, we'll sign post them to other disciplines. 
Um, we fill in a template on the triage OLM referrals. We then direct and ask our uh, pharmacists to do uh, an assessment of the patients. Um, we have a new tool. Our pharmacist has developed a new tool called the Lennon tool. And this, this Lennon tool gives a clear picture of our patients from their antibiotics, their scans, their blood cultures, and this tool helps eliminate, and, and when our microbiologists come to the war day and as we meet, it decreases their workload. So like the microbiologists before used to have to trift through the medical notes, the computers, now that reduces their time, and this puts a clear plan of treatment um, to the patient within 10 or 15 minutes. Um, we counsel our patients and we get their consent, so we tell them what is their paths, what to expect, and we get them to sign a form. We obviously then discuss with our district nursing leads, so when we know there's somebody ready for home, we will be discussing with our district, district nurses and their leads, and we, maybe the district nurse already knows the patient and say, um, that patient's not really suitable, we know the home environment, or we'll have a talk to see can they organise that in the next few days you might have somebody, or we could be ringing them and saying, listen, this person's ready to go today. So the team within the district nurses, they discuss and get their capacity. We assess the patient for their venous access, their different venous access device, and Susan and I can um, insert those. They refer to our district nursing leads, and um, we get all the different paperwork done. The discharging uh, consultants informed by ourselves. Um, we we'll, we'll then do a multidisciplinary. Um, every week, we do a multidisciplinary team meeting, which is our consultant microbiologists, our pharmacists, and Susan and I. And we'll discuss um, the patients. We'll prepare, obviously, for those meetings. We'll discuss their bloods, their scans, the duration of the antibiotics. We're very into, can we switch them to oral? Um, potential patients, we'll also discuss patients and oral antibiotics as well that need blood monitoring, we'll, we also look after them. If there's any concerns, if our district nurses um, have any concern, we'll also discuss that as well. And we'll, we'll, liaise, we'll liaise on with all the appropriate people. Every fortnight now we have a clinic. Susan and I will prepare for that. And all our patients come to our clinic um, to see the consultant microbiologist. Um, we may do dressings, we may do blood cultures, we may change treatment. The patients get their supplies and um, any issues that the patient may have, and we support the patient and family. Any, throughout their treatment plan, if there's any issues, the district nurse need to speak to us, the family need to speak to us, maybe the microbiology is an issue, they'll all come through us as well. So it's one line of um, communication. So the results of our service, we had, we're sort of referring from the old service the previous year to our new service. So for a three month period from April to June of 2019, we had 117 referrals. So this freed up, this equated to 750 sick bed, bed days saved within the Southern Trust, which freed up for patients, other patients to be admitted. Comparing to our new, our old, um, we had a threefold increase in patients switching from oral antibiotics even prior to being discharged. So previously, they would have been discharged from 3% to 10%. The average length of treatment now has reduced from 4.5 days while um, patients treated in 2008. Um, this decreases the length of the duration of their antibiotics. So there's a bigger turnover into oral or stopping. Our success rate has increased from 62 to 85%. And our readmissions from comparing has decreased 25% to 9.3. Um, the IV coordinator also, a lot of our patients are for long-term antibiotic therapy. Um, historically, the radiologists would have put um, pick lines in for our patients. So we, you also have to have the right device for the right duration for the patient. And there's no point putting them out there if you don't have, because you feel it already. So um, we, would come, we would be referring this to, to our one 
radiologist and um, he would try and insert as soon as he can, but there was a long delays. And obviously we were facing the patients who were saying, I just want home. They were very distressed. They're, they're, they had quite um, a lot of cannulas in at this time. And um, I set up a team, a new service for the Southern Trust. Also, um, we had patients who were in Daisy Hill or other areas, and they would have to transfer to Craigavon Trust to get these um, pick lines in, and they would have to take up another bed as well. So this delayed the patient's discharge. So I approached my manager, Eamon Farrell at the time, and Catherine Sheeran, and um, asked, give them the idea, and said, could I start up a new pick line service and train to get this? And as you can see, this is... Um, a pick line service we now do at the bed space. Um, so it was the first really for OPAT service within Ireland and it's like theatre in the in the bed space and we can now insert the lines with that day or the next day. Um, and it's a core part of the nursing in the wards now they they get the pick lines for us now. We put new documentation out, and our district nursing were very au fait with pick lines. They were used to the chemo patients going out there. This has very much evolved even from then. Um, we have a lot of patients with TPN within the wards, and um, a lot of patients with small bowel syndrome who normally would have sat in the wards with high outputs in our, in our ileostomies and that. So now, previously, TPM patients would have to be going on the emergency list and they would have to wait for a theatre where an ethodist would put in a central line, as you see here to the right. Um, these central lines only last 10 to 14 days. Pick lines last the whole time of your treatment. Um, they would also get blocked very frequently. They were very uncomfortable. They're higher risk of infection. And now we are able to put in um, pick lines for these treatments, like a double line, which reduces going to theatre and also is more comfortable for the patients. <clears throat> With nothing to do, but then we've done a quality improvement um, project in 2019. I suppose with tissue viability um, interests as well, we could see patients within the wards with cellulitis. You couldn't miss their big red arm or leg. And we felt there was missed opportunities for these patients to be even admitted. We felt, could we not turn them around at the door in ED? Um, so there was numerous patients we were meeting. Um, and a lot of patients were even being treated with red leg. Well, it was bilateral cellulitis. But there's very rare when you have bilateral cellulitis. So patients were getting IV antibiotics that didn't really need IV antibiotics. And also patients were returning to our ED departments who we felt we could get a home without doing that. So our aim was to prevent hospital admissions, improve our flow through the ED department. And what we done, we interviewed the patients who cellulitis, we discussed it with our staff, our frontline staff, and we done a questionnaire. So following that, we developed a, I developed a pathway for patients. So when we looked at the retrospective data, data of our cellulitis, I was very amazed to see we had actually, this is only in Daisy Hill Hospital, one of our acute hospitals, we had about 900 patients attending the ED department with um, cellulitis. And out of them 900, we were only getting about four referrals from ED. And actually the consultant said, Polly, maybe multiply by three. A lot of people were being coded as DVTs and actually, had cellulitis, so high amounts of patients. So we approached our Daisy Hill. We thought we'd do a pilot at Daisy Hill. They had started out a new direct assessment unit, and this unit actually takes referrals from our GPs. It also supports our ED. Um, so Dr. Billy Massey and Gronje McQuaid, the sister within the ward, and we had a focus group. Um, so we, we identified then, we done training with the, um, to improve, we done training with the staff, and this was to improve the patient flow, the waiting times, the admissions with anybody with cellulitis. So I developed a pathway, and this pathway, if you can see, we found out when we, we interviewed the doctors, some of them didn't know how to grade a cellulitis, what treatment plans, or the treatment plans were disjointed. 
So we um, developed this and coded. So the green would grow its um, oils and then the purple, and you'll see, go on and so forth. And it gives them the whole treatment plan. And it's not a cumbersome doc document. You know in a &E, you don't need any more um, cumbersome. So we wanted something quick and tick box, and also identified the suitable patients that come to our service. It streamlined um, the pathway and all the rel relevant cellulitis uh, information. It just promoted our service, but also um, our team. Uh, we were saying to the doctor, oh, uh, it's calf triaxon, take 20 mils, write that, 50 mil bag, this is the flushes. So what we developed with the OPAT team, our team together, we, and Jilly Redpath, we de developed a cardex. And this cardex is actually amazing because it not only is a pre-written, pre, so it prevents errors, obviously, decreases our doctor's time, it can also dispense a lot of our cellulitis only for a few days. So it decreases, um, when the patient comes back after day two or three, we can dispense again from the same cardiacs. The district nurse can administer from it, and we also have a review date and time. So it is an excellent document. So cellulitis referrals, following a month of training, the increase in referrals went from four a year to 23. We accepted 17, um, and if you can see the, the diagram, the red is Daisy Hill and the blue is Craig Avon, where our pilot didn't happen. Um, within them 17 patients, um, we had 40 beds seven days, and that was only over a month. So um, just over six months, um, as you can see, 2018 to 19 in February, um, we had Four, four the previous year, but um, in July, what do I say, sorry, <laughs> compared to the previous, this is six months, so our referrals are there, and they were like over, we had a total of 250 beds, seven days, between July and February. Um, so I'll hand you over to Susan. Thank you. As Pauline has already highlighted, um, due to the vast area we cover from Kilkeel to Ocker Clocker, Five Mile Town, Cross Maglane and Coal Island, the model we use is the district nurses administer our IV antibiotics. Um, they're very much part of our OPAT team and their lead, Debbie Tumulty, and without them, um, the OPAT service wouldn't be possible. They're central to everything we do. We work very closely with them on a daily basis, and they hate to hear us phoning. Um, service user feedback is very important, and it's very rewarding to see our patients improve and back to normal after their treatment. So this is our this is our happy, smiley OPAT team on a nice sunny day in Craigavon, um, and without the support of the microbiologists, the antimicrobial pharmacists and Pauline and myself, the service wouldn't be possible. We'd also like to thank um, the directors and managers in the Southern Trust, OPPC, as well as the Acute Services for their support and guidance. And thank you to Pauline for her hard work and dedication to OPAT. Um, you can see by our presentation that she definitely is a trailblazer in the Southern Trust. Thank you. Hello.